Hey there! Ever wondered how computers can read and understand long documents like books? In this video, we will show you how they do it using something called a large language model, LLM. We will break down the process step by step from loading a PDF to asking questions based on what's inside. Get ready to see how technology can make learning and finding information easier than ever before. First, import necessary libraries and modules for the code to function. It includes Torch for machine learning tasks, as well as various modules from the Langchain package for document loading, text splitting, embeddings, vector stores, large language models, memory management, and conversational retrieval chains. Next, device selection. We will verify if a CUDA-enabled GPU is accessible. Device equals to torch.device. CUDA if torch.cuda. is available. Else, CPU. For machine learning tasks, CUDA is preferred as it offers faster processing, but if you don't have CUDA, you can still use the CPU. So to adapt to different hardware setups, we check if a CUDA-enabled GPU is available. If it is, we assign it to the variable device for faster computations. If not, we gracefully fall back to using the CPU. Next, document loading. Create a PDF document loader with a specified file path. Loader equals to PyPDFLoader. File path equals to PDF path. Then the load method is called to load the content of the PDF document. Data equals to loader.load. Next, text splitting. Initialize a text splitter object with parameters defining the chunk size and overlap. Text splitter equals to recursive character text splitter. Chunk size equals to 10,000. Chunk overlap equals to 200. Then the split documents method is used to split the loaded document into chunks of text. Text chunks equals to text splitter dot split documents and pass data. Next, we are diving into the heart of our operation, the pivotal moment where we initialize the large language model. Picture this. With just a few lines of code, we are summoning the power of language comprehension. Here it goes. LLM answer gen equals to llama CPP. Streaming equals to true. This variable is set to true, indicating that the LLM will process data in a streaming manner, meaning it can handle large amounts of data by processing it in smaller, manageable chunks rather than all at once. Next, model path equals to the model path. Next, temperature equals to 0.75. This parameter controls the randomness of the LLM's output. A higher temperature results in more diverse and creative responses, while lower temperature produces more deterministic and conservative responses. Next, top P equals to 1. This variable, often referred to as nucleus sampling or top P sampling, determines the cumulative probability cutoff for generating the model's response. A value of 1 means the model considers all possibilities, while smaller values restrict the selection to a subset of the most likely tokens. Next, F16KV equals to true. This variable is set to true, indicating that the LLM uses 16-bit floating point precision for its key value pairs. This can help reduce memory usage and speed up computations, especially on GPU with limited memory capacity. Next, verbose equals to false. When set to false, this variable suppresses additional output or diagnostic information during the LLM's operation, keeping the process clean and concise. And finally, NCTX equals to 4096. This variable determines the maximum length of the input contacts and tokens that the LLM can consider when generating responses. In this case, it's set to 4096, allowing the model to consider a substantial amount of context for generating responses. That's it. This block is where the magic begins. We are essentially initializing LLM as a digital brain to understand and respond to questions based on the input data. It's like flipping a switch and bringing a sophisticated language processing system to life, all set to unravel the mysteries hidden within our documents. Next. Embeddings initialization. Embeddings equals to hugging face embeddings. Model name equals to the model name. And model quarks equals to a dictionary with the key device mapped to the device we initialize at the beginning. Next, vector store initialization. Vector store equals to chroma dot from documents. Text chunks and embeddings. This vector store will allow us to efficiently retrieve information and perform operations based on the semantic similarity of the text. Let's initialize a memory object with specified memory key and return messages settings. Memory equals to conversation buffer memory. Memory key equals to chat history and return messages equals to true. This memory is to store chat history and retrieve messages when needed, providing a crucial mechanism for maintaining context and continuity in conversations. Next, initialize a conversational retrieval chain using the LLM vector store retriever and memory. Answer can chain equals to conversational retrieval chain dot from LLM. LLM equals to LLM answergen. Retriever equals to vector store dot as retriever. Memory equals to memory. This enables the system to generate answers to user queries in a conversational context. 
All set. Let's dive into the exciting part. Create a loop that lets us engage with our newly minted conversational system. While true, user input equals to input. Enter a question. If user input dot lower is exit, break. Answer equals to answer again chain dot run. Pass the user input in a dictio query with the key question. And finally print the answer. Let's run the code. Here I load a PDF about Sachin Tendulkar. Let's ask questions based on its content. When did Sachin born? When did he make his debut? See how accurately the model fetches answers from the PDF. It's incredible to witness the precision and relevance of the responses it provides. This really demonstrates the power of modern AI and machine learning in understanding and processing large texts. AI models, particularly LLM, are evolving rapidly. We encourage you to stay curious and explore more about AI and machine learning. Our channel is dedicated to providing you with the latest updates, tutorials, and practical applications of these technologies. Whether you are a beginner looking to get started or an advanced user seeking to deepen your knowledge, we have something for everyone. Stay tuned, keep learning, and let's continue to discover the limitless possibilities of AI together. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more exciting content. Happy coding!